Aloha everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. It's time for another reaction video. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, there's a reason why I don't sing and I shouldn't, yet I still do. Sorry about a little bit of the redness around the brows. I just got them done after like five months. I don't know why it took me so long to get them done. I was letting them grow out like a wilderness. But they're finally done, they look clean, but the redness is still there after last night, so we deal with it. What are we gonna do? In today's video, I'm going to be reacting to Peyton Liss skincare routine. Or uh, is it Peyton? 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 I don't know, I feel like Peyton sounds nicer. Anyway, I'm gonna be reacting to her skincare routine. To be honest, I'm not super familiar with Peyton List, but I saw a bunch of you guys in the comment section requesting that I react to her skincare routine. And when I actually like saw her, of course I recognized her face, but when I looked into her more, I was like, oh my God, she has been in so many movies. Like I think I knew her from Disney Channel, but she's been in a lot more than that. Like she is an active actor, which good for her, that's amazing. She's pretty young, so I think that's really impressive. And I'm always interested in seeing younger celebrity skincare routines because we're in such a new age of skincare. Like skincare has become so popular. So many people are doing it. Everyone has a skincare routine. And I feel like sometimes in the past there was more representation for older people or, you know, the rich old ladies who do their skincare routine type of energy where now it's much more normalized, which is why I'm really intrigued to see like what younger celebrity skincare routines are. The video is called Peyton Liss CBD Infused Nighttime Skincare Routine, which is interesting because I'm definitely someone who, I like CBD in skincare, but I also don't feel like CBD is like the magic ingredient that it needs to be in everything. So I'm really interested to see what her routine is going to be. And considering that I don't really speak much about CBD on my channel, I thought this would be a fun opportunity just to see what comes about. So let's get into it. As we get into this video, I want to say I've partnered up with Nate to do a giveaway for you guys. Woo woo! And not just any giveaway, there will be 101 winners. Yes, 100 and one. 101. 100 winners will be getting one of my favorite skincare products and one lucky winner will be getting an entire list of my favorite skincare products. Here's how. If you aren't familiar with Nate, they are an awesome new iOS app that's changing the game in online shopping. You can kind of think of it as a Pinterest mood board meets online shopping. You can save items from any website, create lists and share them with friends, and send gifts with those items over text. I partnered up with Nate to create three different lists, my morning, afternoon, and nighttime skincare routines. And if you're a lucky winner, you can win all the products in those lists. And here's how you enter to win. All you have to do is download the Nate app, follow one or all of my lists by February 15th. And that's it. That's literally all you have to do. To download it and follow my list, go to the link in my description box below. You can see my current nighttime skincare routine with some of my favorite products like the Skin Fix Lipid Peptide Cream or the Shani Darden Retinol Serum, one of my new favorites, which is not cheap. And like I said, there will be a hundred winners who win one of the products from my list and one lucky winner will be winning all of the products from all my lists. So make sure you download the app for a chance to win. And thank you so much, Nate, for partnering with me on this. I don't think I've ever partnered on a giveaway this big, so thank you so much, Nate, for being this generous. All right, let's move on to the video. If you don't know me, I've worked as a specialist, but I'm not a licensed esthetician or a dermatologist, nor do I ever claim to be. That's not my path, my journey for right now anyway. So if you are having any concerns with your skin, please go see your esthetician or dermatologist to get that shit treated. I make these videos just for fun and for information's sake and just to share my personal opinions about skincare. And it's in no way meant to be intended as professional or medical advice. Hi, I'm Peyton Liss. Oh my God. This is my nighttime skincare She is stunning. Oh my gosh, she glows. Wow, she's so beautiful. I mean, so of course, she looks beautiful all the time. In the bathroom, wow. that is my dressing room on set. And I just finished working, so I thought I would use it to my full advantage. It's very <laughs> fancy in here. First she's off, cute. I like her. This is the toothbrush I've been using. It's a compostable bamboo toothbrush mm. by Bite. And it came with these champagne toothpaste bites. Oh, cute. Which are pretty yummy. Also, we don't use plastic, it's glass. No, Love that she's focused on sustainability. You know, I've really wanted to get into bamboo toothbrushes, but I brush so vigorously that I really need to use gentle, gentle, gentle bristles. And most bamboo bristles I found are not very gentle. So if you guys do have any recommendations, let me know because I love sustainable options for brushing your teeth. I also have been wanting to try those little toothpaste bits that come in a glass jar. If you guys have tried them, let me know because I would be totally interested in trying them out. But I think it's already so cool that she's focused on sustainability. I am liking this so far. Wow, her skin is Gorgeous. My Derma wow. e Skin oh, Distress okay. CBD Cleanser. It's super calming and there's aloe vera in it. I feel like my skin is really sensitive and this has worked wonders. I feel like everything irritates it. For a while there, I was just using an insane amount of products. I think I was overdoing it 
to the extreme. Um, so I've just simplified my routine a lot. This is what works for me. It says there's 250 milligrams of mm. CBD in it. Cool. It's so pretty too. It has like this sheer pearl effect on it. Mm. It doesn't look like it froths up. Where I really found my best skincare products. I've heard things from so many women. And even just sitting in a room tonight, I was sitting in a room with wardrobe and hair and makeup. And I feel like I just pick their brains about what they like all night. And I've just That's learned cool. so much. Okay, so I am familiar with Derma E. Um, I'll be honest, in the past, I haven't like been fully on board Derma E. I like their vision. I like that they're focused on sustainability, but they tend to formulate with a lot of essential oils, like so many essential oils. But let me look at this cleanser because I am okay with essential oils in a wash off treatment, so long as they're like reasonably located on the ingredient list. Like you don't open the bottle and you're like, <laughs> Yeah, that's not what I want. I'm curious to know if CBD in a cleanser form is actually going to be effective, like if it's only effective on a leave-on treatment. I know one of the downsides of CBD that I have heard some dermatologists say is that it can be pore blocking, but don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure yet. I still am fine with CBD in a leave-on treatment, but I don't know if it would be effective in a wash-off treatment. Okay, so looking at the ingredient lens, it has glycerin as the second ingredient, so you know it's going to be hydrating. It's hydrating alcohols, aloe. Oh! Okay, so this has cannabinoidal. Here's the thing when it comes to CBD. CBD is such a complicated thing. And lots of companies love to say like they use CBD when in actuality, they're using cannabis sativa seed oil, which is good for like hydrating the skin, a moisturizing oil, but it's not the same thing as CBD. Cannabinoidal is what CBD is, where you're actually getting those beneficial soothing effects. So make sure when you're looking for any CBD product that you always check the ingredient list to make sure that it has cannabinoidal, not just cannabis sativa seed oil, because they're not the same thing. But I'm already impressed. It has cannabinoid oil, 250 milligrams. So, I mean, that's a good amount, particularly for a cleanser. It has panthenol, allantoin, camellia extract. And it's fragrance free. It doesn't have any essential oils. I'm about to buy this cleanser. Wow, okay, this is a really good cleanser. I, you know, Derma E did send me like a whole box and I'll be honest, I haven't gone through the products yet. I'm sorry, I have a lot of products that I have to get through, but they may have sent this one because, well, I feel like I would have seen it. Wow, okay, I definitely wanna try this cleanser. The ingredient list looks great. I mean, looking at it, I would definitely say it's probably an ingredient list for people with a little bit more dry skin. I noticed for her, it doesn't froth up. And for me, I do like a frothy cleanser. However, sometimes in the morning, I do like to use cleansers that are very gentle because you're only removing your skincare. You don't need to deep cleanse and remove the dirt and built up sebum that's accumulated throughout the day. So I definitely want to try this. I am going to purchase this because that's awesome. Maybe I'm opening up to Dermy. That's one of the reasons I love doing these reaction videos. I love it when I'm able to find products that like I want to try from what they're using because so much of the time I feel like I'm just dragging relentlessly and I feel bad. But when moments like this happen, I'm like, yes, more unhealthy spending habits, bring it on. I still have eye makeup underneath. I'll go in with a little cotton pad with Clinique, take the day off. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna lie, I don't have a cotton pad. And I'm gonna use a little bit of toilet paper. People, please don't hate on me. That's fine. I it's just, it's that. not pleasant. I feel like I always watch TikToks and YouTubes where people are just hating on skincare routines and just destroying people for what they do. And I feel like I've learned so much from that. I love <laughs> TikTok, no more witch hazel. I used to use witch hazel all the time and apparently it's super drying, all the witch hazel toners and everything else. So I stopped doing that in the last few months and I'm not gonna lie, I think it really was drying out my skin. Ah, this yep. Isn't oh my God, for a second, I thought she was coming for me. <laughs> I mean, rightfully so. <laughs> oh, the way that she talked about it, she's like people hating on skincare routines. I thought she was gonna go on a rant and I'm like, you know what girl? What can I say? But it's cool that she's learning from people on TikTok or on YouTube. I wonder who she watches because I mean, I agree with what she was saying about witch hazel. And that's the funny thing about what I've seen over and over and over and over again, as I or other creators have recommended against witch hazel is that there are so many messages and people who have responded saying that, yes, witch hazel was drying out my skin. It was making my skin more sensitive. It was irritating me. And I'm just like, hmm. Interesting. And while anecdotal evidence is not real evidence, I do think that there's something to say when the experience at large with these ingredients is negative. One thing I have to say, so she uses the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. I'm personally not crazy about that cleansing balm because it does include an ingredient called polyethylene, which is essentially plastic. And there's still like a debate as to whether or not it hurts marine wildlife. So I just like to avoid it. But more than anything, I would hope that she uses that before 
before her cleanser, not after her cleanser. The reason being with a cleansing balm, especially one like that, it's not meant to be left on the skin. You're supposed to rinse it off, emulsify it, remove it, and then go in with a cleanser afterwards. If you're trying to remove your eye makeup by using a cleansing balm after you've cleansed, the residue of the accumulated makeup and cleansing balm will still be in your pores. Because remember, a cleansing balm is meant to break up the makeup on your face. It doesn't actually remove it from deep in your pores. That's what a cleanser does. So as long as she's just doing that before, then I don't have an issue with it. Also, Peyton, if you are watching this, I do recommend checking out the reusable cotton rounds you can find on Amazon since you seem to be focused on sustainability. You can find so many different ones on Amazon. I'll have them linked down below along with the other product recommendations I make. If you guys are interested in supporting me, they are affiliate links, but no pressure whatsoever. Feel free to use them if you want to. You can find like sets of like 10 cotton rounds on Amazon. You use one a day and then you just throw them in the washer. You reuse them and there's no waste made, which I think is an awesome alternative to just standard cotton rounds. So pro tip. This is another Derma E hydrating mist. Oh, it has hyaluronic okay. acid, rose water, coconut water. She has such a so nice, nice jawline. <laughs> I'm so, so nice. jealous. <laughs> I usually keep it in my purse during the summer. And if it's a hot day and I'm wearing no makeup, just pull that out and give one to everyone around me. Okay, let's see this. Derma E hydrating mist. Now, if you aren't familiar with my opinion on mists, I'm not necessarily opposed to them. It's just that the majority of mists do include so much fragrance. And because you have to respray your face over and over and over again, you're just reintroducing yourself to that fragrance irritation. Also, I feel like with a lot of mists, you're kind of wasting a lot of product because a lot of it just dissipates into the air. That's why I would prefer a hydrating serum where you're making sure you're getting everything. But again, a lot of people like the mist just for the experience, not as much like solely focused on the skincare benefits. So I understand the appeal. Okay, so a hydrating mist with hyaluronic acid. Let's at the ingredients. Okay, so it has glycerin, it has rose water, which if you want to know my opinion on rose water, I don't think it's like amazing, but I think it's fine. And I think there are benefits to it and it's fine to use in a formula. There's coconut water, there is witch hazel extract, but you know what? It's paired with glycerin and hyaluronic acid and coconut water and rose water. So the likelihood that it's gonna dry out her skin, I don't think is very likely. So it's probably fine. It has vitamin C, it has panthenol, it has green tea. I mean, it has a lot of ingredients. Oh, okay, yes. Like my main issue with Derma E, they have it listed on the ingredient list, natural fragrance oils. That refers to fragrant essential oils. Now, one of my issues, I have two different issues. First of all, I personally don't like essential oils. I just don't feel like they're necessary to a skincare product and that they're only excluding a certain amount of people who do have a fragrance allergy solely for the reason that it smells nice and not for any benefit for the skin. But the main reason I'd say I have with this is that they're not being transparent about what fragrant essential oils are being used. And that's kind of my big issue with fragrance overall is just like, just tell us what's in it. Like stop using the term fragrance, parfum, natural fragrance or whatever it may be, because we as consumers, aren't able to know what ingredients are first in the product. And then if someone does have a sensitivity or an irritation to a specific type of essential oil, they're not going to be able to know if this product is going to break them out or make them have a reaction or not. So Derma E, if you're watching, please update your fragrance list. I would appreciate it so much more. And that's really what it comes down to with my frustration with fragrance and skincare products. But hey, at least this facial mist doesn't have a lot of denatured alcohol. I always love to see that. I always get so annoyed whenever I see facial mist where the second ingredient is denatured alcohol because it's just going to dry out your skin. But she did say spraying a mist gives it to everyone around her. So I mean, next time you're using a facial mist, just have all your friends stand around. Make sure you're not wasting product, I guess. My lips get crazy dry, especially on set. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm always Same. changing lip colors and everything else. I love mm -hmm. this brown sugar lip scrub. Oh, okay. By Fresh, the sugar lip polish. So I'll just take a little bit. And someone just uh, showed me a trick yesterday. If you take a toothbrush, you can scrub your lips. Yeah, you um, can. Of all the dry skin. So that's the way to do it. And then I'll just rinse it off. I also love the Dior uh, lip scrub. It's in a lipstick. Ooh. So you don't even need a rinse or anything. That's my go-to for the day. That one's but expensive. I'm members. familiar with that one. Here's the thing when it comes to lip scrubs. I don't think they're necessarily bad. I don't think that they're the best things ever, but I would recommend like a sugar scrub as opposed to a toothbrush just because sugar does break down with water. So you're gonna make sure you're not over exfoliating your lips. And with a toothbrush, it's just, you know, it's fibers that aren't gonna break down. So it's really easy to be overly rough. So if anything, just use a lip scrub. That's a fine option to use, but you don't need to buy Dior. <laughs> That one's so expensive when you can pretty much get the same result from a sugar scrub. So there's no need to buy that one. And then usually I'll have a big tub of Aquaphor, but really I'm not picky with my lip balms. It's just whatever I can slather on. Aquaphor is great. Really thick layer before I go to bed. Uh, this is the Mario Badesco Mint Lip Balm. Mm. I also like their Rose one. 
I'm not familiar with the ingredients in that one. Oh, okay, so it has dimethicone, it has avocado oil, those are great for a lip balm. It has some standard silicone polymers, not anything super impressive. Ooh, okay, wow, fragrance is way up on the ingredient list. Like, that is at the top of the ingredient list. And it does have some good, like, hydrating oils and antioxidant-rich oils afterwards, but they're all after fragrance. I mean, here's the thing. I'm okay with fragrance in the lip... I, wow, I didn't realize we were going to talk about fragrance so much in this video. I'm so sorry. I'm okay with fragrance in the lip treatment because in reality, the foods you expose your lips to have concentrations way higher of the irritating components than most lip products do. However, I'm never a fan of seeing that companies formulate with more fragrance or disclosed fragrance at a higher concentration than the beneficial oils or ingredients that they use. If fragrance was at the bottom of this ingredient list, I'd be like, okay, you know, I'm more open-minded to it. Or at least if they disclosed what fragrance ingredients they used instead of just fragrance parfum, I would have had a little bit more respect for it. And while the order of an ingredient list doesn't, doesn't necessarily tell you anything, like technically anything under the 1% line can be listed in whatever order it wants to be, but it's never a good sign to me when I see that fragrance is up at the top of the ingredient list because... That's just not a good sign. If you are looking for a lip balm recommendation, I mean, if it works for you, like she said, Aquaphor is great. I think it's an awesome product. It sometimes works for me, but to be honest, the one that works really, really well for me is the Primera Clean Berry Lip Mask. That one is pretty much the only one I found that actually really works well and has a very innovative ingredient list. So I recommend that one instead. Okay, next is Moss Morning Sleep Peel Pads. They're oh. hydrating and they're also exfoliating. They have hyaluronic acid. They are so nice. I used to get um, facials from Rosette who created these. Oh, cool. And she's just a great human. And also she made a really great product. They are biodegradable and cool. super gentle on the skin. Um, they also smell amazing. I feel like I just have started it's to not a good sign. <laughs> add neck care into my routine. Mm. I'm really trying to the whole anti -aging. So just for reference, I'm a huge believer in taking care of your neck, but sometimes using an exfoliating peel on your neck can be really, really harsh and you'll see some extreme reactions. So just be aware out there, you don't always need to exfoliate your neck in the same way that you do your face. Like I can't with mine. My neck is so sensitive. I can't do that. Uh, let me look at this ingredient list. Rosette morning peel. Okay. So it has glycolic acid. It has lactic acid, propanediol. Oh, it has marshmallow root extract. I love marshmallow. That's actually in this moisturizer right here, which if you guys didn't know, I did a kit with Kinship featuring my favorite products from them where proceeds go to help protecting the oceans. If you want to learn more about it, it's in my description box below. But marshmallow extract is in that product and I don't see it in very many products, so I like that it's in this one. It has hyaluronic acid. Oh. I don't see fragrance. Oh wow, it also has mandelic acid, lactic acid, ascorbic acid. Wow, so this is loaded. I don't see fragrance. Oh, you know what it probably is? Marshmallow extract has a natural aroma to it. That's why this product is fragrance free, but it does have this very specific type of aroma. And that's probably why it smells good. Okay, gotcha. It's the marshmallow extract. Okay, cool. Um, Yeah, I mean, this, this ingredient list looks great. The only thing is that I'm personally not a fan of peel products that do include like a wipe or something that is disposable. Touching on something real quick, and this is not to drag her at all. Um, This is something that I just recently learned as well. Just because something is biodegradable does not mean that if you just put it in nature or throw it out, it'll naturally biodegrade. Sometimes, and I'm not saying that this is the case for this product, it's just the case a lot of the times, a material can technically be biodegradable when properly processed at a biodegradable facility. And there's not many biodegradable facilities in the US. And depending on what type of material, it may only be able to be biodegradable in very few locations. And what can happen is that companies can technically say that their material is biodegradable, when in reality, there's only one location in the nation, two locations in the nation that can actually process that. Which means that even though it's biodegradable, it's not likely that those will reach that facility, which means that they're just pretty much regular waste. So just something to be aware of. That's why when I see biodegradable, I'm like, oh, great. But that doesn't necessarily mean that like it's amazing. It's the best way to go is just products that don't create any waste beyond the packaging. But overall, this ingredient list is good. But to the benefit of this one, this is probably one of the only, if not the only facial peel I've seen that doesn't include fragrant extracts or fragrant components. That's impressive. That's very impressive. So I kind of want to try it. <laughs> it's a little expensive. It's $32 for 12 peels, but I mean, it looks like a cool product. So for my breakouts, this AccuClear purifying lotion oh. by DMK, I think this is my favorite product I use on my skin just because okay. 
it really does clear up breakouts. I had terrible acne on my chin and everything. Really? Else. I always tried to hide it. I would never um, guess. Never really, wow. I took off my makeup. I don't think I would have been brave enough to do this video um, oh. a year ago. But since doing the routine that I do now, That's so I have felt so much more confident. It's wow. actually makes me emotional. And oh, I just, I <laughs> That's I so cool. Much, I usually like a little PM out and I'll go in on my chin. That always makes me so happy to see. It's amazing. It's honestly just mind-blowing the connection between self-confidence and skincare. It's really a unique connection and I've seen so many people like with me get emotional or talk about like how how much it means to them online and it's it's just incredible to see like how important it is and how big of a difference it can make in someone's life. Something as simple as a good skincare routine or clearing up acne. It's, it's awesome. I have to see what this product is because I'm actually not familiar with that ingredient list although I am familiar with DMK. Okay, so it's the AccuClear Purifying Lotion. You need to find a DMK clinic in order to purchase it, which I'm not sure where they're located, but ooh, ooh, this has a very interesting ingredient list. Okay, I want to try this. Wow. So it has a root extract called Cremaria Triandra root extract. And I'm honestly not familiar with it. I'd love to learn more about that. If you guys do know anything, let me know down below, but it looks very interesting. I love root extracts for their antioxidant power and soothing abilities. It has salicylic acid. It has niacinamide. It has magnesium assorbyl phosphate, which is a stabilized form of vitamin C, dimethicone, zinc oxide to reduce sensitivity, gluconolactone, which is great for exfoliating. Uh, this looks pretty cool. I mean, this, this looks like a really cool product. I definitely want to try it out. I just don't know where to get it. Oh wait, here's a clinic. Okay, you just have to find them at like authorized retailers. That's what I thought. Very interesting. I like that product and I like the difference that it's made in her skin. And this Derma E, again, the Skin Distressing oh. Calming CBD. This is the moisturizer and I love this. My skin loves it. My skin is so happy. Oh, good. Okay, so I'm just taking a little bit and... <laughs> I love how she applies it. I have to say that has saved my skin is just to stop picking. I used to pick and it used to be my favorite thing. I love watching Dr. Pimple Popper videos <laughs> and all of it. Yeah. But the more I picked, I'm just not a professional and the more the bacteria would just spread underneath. I yep. feel like if I have a breakout now, I just try to treat it and, and let it sit. And if I Good. need to go get it taken care of, I'll go get extractions. And I'm not gonna use this tonight. A makeup artist that I just work with, it's called Zippity Doodab. It's a spot treatment for big pimples. So if I had one, I would put it on, but I really love this stuff. And that is my nighttime skincare routine. Oh, she's Thank so cute. Derma E. CBD moisturizer. I'm gonna hope and cross my fingers that this one's also free of essential oils. Let's hope, let's hope, let's hope. Hey, it is, woo! And it's formulated with cannabinoidal, jojoba oil, panthenol, allantoin, very similar ingredients. Wow, this product looks awesome. I'm definitely gonna be trying both of those because that looks amazing. Wow, Dermy, I'm very impressed. I really hope you're starting to up your selection of products without essential oils, it's amazing. Well, what are my thoughts? First of all, I think she's adorable. She's super cute. I like her energy. She's very chill. She's very relaxed, beautiful skin. Oh my gosh. And she seems to know a pretty good amount about skincare. I mean, she says that she watches TikToks and YouTube videos about it. She knew that previously she used to overdo it with skincare products, which is a symptom most people have when first getting into the skincare world. We all wanna try so many products out, not really realizing that that's actually not great for our skin and that a simple minimalistic routine is the best thing to go with. She covered her basics, she got her makeup remover, her cleansing in, she's exfoliating and she's moisturizing. That's all you need for a nighttime routine. And overall, I have to say, looking at the products that she was using their ingredient list, I think it was a really good routine. Like the only product with fragrance that I know of is that hydrating mist. The rest of them are really focused on soothing sensitivity and irritation, which I think is great, particularly for someone with as fair as skin as her. But I would love to know what sunscreen she's using because her skin, I could, ugh, I could just imagine how quickly it would get sun damage. So the fact that she's really focused on soothing the skin is amazing. I think that's perfect. But what do you guys think of this? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, let me know who you think I should should react to next. I always love doing these reaction videos and seeing what celebrity skincare routine is next. So just let me know if you guys do want me to see any more. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can see my videos every single week. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.